Hello, my beautiful ladies. Thank you so much for connecting with me this morning. I'm so excited to be here live on YouTube, on Facebook. I am so, so thrilled about today's topic because we're going to be learning how to be good leaders in every single area of our lives. So um, for those of you who are connecting or are new to this, I wanted to remind you we're studying our book, The Virtuous Woman of Today, and today we're going to be studying chapter 11. So once again, is how to be a good leader. So without further ado, let's get started. Thank you once again, my loves, for being here with me today. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Diana Bryant, and I am passionate to help women transform their life with God's Word. And um, I have a devotional that I put out every single day, Monday through Friday. Uh, if you're not part of it yet, they're all recorded on my podcast and also here on YouTube, so make sure you go and check them out. It's a five-minute a podcast devotional that will encourage you and help you on Mondays to start your week right. It's called Good Morning Lord. And then from Tuesday to Friday is Wisdom Seeds. And literally that's where they are. They're a one minute seed devotional that it will help you get inspired and get closer to God every day and planting those good seeds in your mind everything with the word of God. Amen. So really excited to be here. Make sure you like and share this video with other friends and turn on notifications and subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss out anything that we do every week. And uh, I'm really excited guys because we have been studying the different puzzle pieces uh, for how to become that virtuous woman that God created us to be. And last week we learned how to be a happy woman. And I encourage you guys, because today we're going to jump from, uh, or we're going to skip a chapter, but I encourage you to read it anyway. That chapter is chapter 10 and it's be a compassionate woman. So if you, you struggle with being compassionate or it's something that you really want to improve or get better at, it, I encourage you to read chapter 10 and it's to be a compassionate woman. But as I said today, we're going to learn how to be a woman that leads and the most important, how to be a good leader for other people and for yourself. Amen. So before we get started, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for the opportunity you give us this morning to be here in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for all the divine strategies that you're going to be giving us today to learn how to be a, a, a woman who can lead not just our own life, but lead the people that are, surround us. Father, thank you so much for those strategies, for those practical steps. We ask you to please help us uh, implement them in our life, Lord, and to become the virtuous woman that you have created us to be. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody says, Amen. I'm so happy to see you guys connecting here on YouTube and Facebook. Let's get started by uh, reading a Bible verse that uh, is going to teach us a little bit more about how to be a good leader. You're going to find that in Proverbs 31, and we're going to read from 15 to 17. Once again, Proverbs 31, 15 to 17, and it says, She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and provisions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously and her arms are strong for her tasks. The Lord is talking about, the word is talking about here about the virtuous woman. And if you guys see here, this woman is a leader at home, at her business, everything she does, she is leading and, and she's doing it um, with everything she got, right? Like she's really up late, up, up late and up early to complete what God is calling her to do. So this is very inspiring, guys. And I wanted to start this teaching with this Bible verse because the Word of God describes the virtuous woman as a leader. And I wanted us to start seeing ourselves as those leaders that God has call us to be. Many women believe that this topic or that this title of a leader doesn't apply to them precisely because they don't have a leadership title and it doesn't have anything to do with leadership 
Uh, in fact, we have a title. We are daughters of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and that makes us already automatically a leader in his kingdom. Um, amen. Now, the definition of a leader, I want you guys to pay close attention, and this definition comes from the dictionary. So it is just so we understand what a leader is. A leader is a person who is capable of influencing others. We all are capable of influencing anybody who comes our way. And the reason why is because God has called us to do so. Amen. Now, let me ask you some questions because you might think, oh, this, this teaching it doesn't apply to me. I don't need to be a leader. I'm not in a leading position. But ask yourself these questions as I'm asking them. Answer yourself in your mind if this is you. Are you responsible for your own life? Are you a mother? Are you a wife? Uh, do you have any kind of occupation at work? Are you a Christian? If you answer yes to either or any of these questions, that means you are a leader. You have been positioned somewhere, even if you are part of society. That's another question. Are you part of society? We all are part of society and that position us to influence somebody at some given point. So if your answer is here to yes to any of these questions, then you are a leader once again. Now, when you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are immediately receiving your leadership title and responsibility. The moment you say, Lord, um, here I am, I, I accept you in my heart, immediately you are becoming a leader. As a Christian, God has given you the authority to be a leader and you can influence many people wherever you go. The Lord says that you are the salt and the light on the world and ask you to influence others with your attitudes, your words, and your actions. So the more you read the word of God, the more you get closer to him, the more you realize that you have a responsibility as a Christian. And he calls us to be the salt and the light of this world, to influence other people with our walk. Amen. Now you are a leader, not only in your home and at work, but you are also a leader in your own life. And I will say that's the most important part is being a leader in your own life, how you are leading your life. Leadership is required to manage your life and to make your own decisions. So every single time you have to make a decision, you're leading yourself towards whatever it is that you want to go. So I'm going to give you some examples. So you guys can notice how many times you, we are leading ourselves in our own life. Now, I'm pretty sure at some point you have to make the decision where you were going to work, how are you going to feed your body every day? How are you going to get dressed every day? Like, what are you going to wear? What are you going to see, read, or listen to? How are you going to spend your time? And who are you going to spend your time with? How are you going to manage your finances? How are you going to raise your children? How are you going to, to influence your own life and the life of those who surround you? So every single time you have to think about it and make a decision about it, you're leading yourself somewhere. You're leading your children somewhere. Amen. Now, God created us all with the ability to be leaders. Once again, that's already embedded in us. Now, you're not born a good leader. You become a good leader. God created us to be leaders, but as we grow closer to God, as we grow in a relationship with him and we get closer and, and read his word every single day, he transforms us and teaches us to become good leaders. Amen. Now, this can only be achieved by once again, getting closer to God and following the footsteps of Jesus Christ. Amen. The more we follow um, Jesus and his teachings and the more we become good leaders. When you review or, or renew your mind with the word of God, he fills you up with wisdom to be a good leader in, in anything he wants you to do, in anything he's calling you to do. In this case, in every single area of your life. So when he calls you, once again, to 
be part of his kingdom, to be one of his daughters. He's calling you to be the salt and the um, light of the world and to influence other people starting with yourself. Amen. Now, I want to start today, guys, with, I'm not start, but continue uh, by, and this is stories in the book, by reading word by word a story that a teacher told me when I was little and that it really influenced my life and it helped me see leadership from a different perspective. And I want to read it to you once again, it's on the book, but want to read it right now so we can continue the teaching, understanding it from this perspective. Amen. So this story goes like this. There are three types of people in life that are compared to carrots, eggs, and coffee. So we're going to think about those three elements and each of them as three different kinds of people. Once again, carrots, eggs, and coffee. If you compare the circumstances of your life to hot water, so let's imagine we have a, um, you know, a bowl of hot water and we're going to imagine that the hot water is circumstances in life, good things, bad things that happens in life. That's the hot, that container of hot water. Amen. And put each of these elements on it. Once again, putting the carrots, putting the eggs and putting the coffee, coffee in that hot, hot water. You will see how each one reacts differently. Now the carrot, but let's think about the carrot first. The carrot enters the water is strong and hard. But after being in the boiling water, it becomes weak and easy to fall apart. So think about it. If you have a carrot, before you put it in hot water, the carrot is hard, right? But the moment you put it in hot water, it becomes soft and it's something that you can actually dissolve with your own fingers. Now, now let's think about the egg. So now remember, we are comparing this to different kinds of people. Now let's think about the egg. The egg enters the water fragile and it, it's, Thin shell protects the liquid interior, but after being in the boiled water, it becomes hotter and it, it, it's harder to break, right? So in other words, in conclusion, these two elements, the carrots and the eggs are both influenced by the hot water. And because we're talking about hot water as being the circumstances in life, we're saying that the circumstances in life are influencing, changing people, these two types of people. But the coffee, and this is the part that I absolutely love, the coffee, however, is different. After being in boiled water, it changes the color, the taste, and the smell of the water. And that's what makes coffee a good leader. Because what happens with coffee? Coffee doesn't let the circumstances, the hot water influence or change its form. It comes to influence and change the taste, the color, and the smell of the water itself. Amen. How many of you, my beautiful ladies, want to be a coffee? I type in an amen for those of you who are watching. I see you here on YouTube and Facebook. Thank you for connecting. And if you guys want to be coffee, raise your hand and say, amen, that is me. And that's exactly what God calls us to do. If we think about it, when God says we are to be the salt and the light of the world, both the side, the salt and the light influence, changes environments, changes the circumstances. Amen. It goes from darkness to be bright and it goes from not having taste at all to having some sort of taste when you put the, the salt in it. So we need to be influencers. So you must choose to be coffee. For this, you have to say yes to God's calling to be the salt and the light of the earth. He has called you, he has equipped you, and you have everything within you. You're not perfect. You won't be a perfect leader, obviously, because you don't, you're not born a perfect leader. But as you get closer to God, he will perfect those skills in you, even to treat yourself and your own life. Now, although we are not perfect, as I said before, remember that the Lord perfects himself in us, in our weakness. And he gives us the wisdom to do everything he's calling us to do. So we are all set. When he calls us to do something, when he calls us to be a leader, we are all set because we have everything 
that we need and require to be able to complete what he's calling us to be and become and do as leader, as the salt and the light of this world. Amen. Now, it all starts with the decision you make in your own life every day. It starts with a decision. How am I going to dress? What am I going to eat? All those kind of things. Am I going to be late or early to this appointment? Every single decision you make is guiding you to be that leader in your life. Now, it is necessary to understand that in order to be a good leader and help other people to transform their life, we must transform our own life. It is impossible, guys, to teach and guide somebody on something that we ourselves have not gone through. Amen. So that's why the first focus must be on how am I leading my life? How am I leading myself before I can lead my children or anybody that God is placing around me to lead? So in other words, choose to be coffee and start with your own life. Amen. For those of you who are just connecting, you guys are going to have to listen to the beginning of the teaching where we were talking about how to be coffee in life. Coffee is a good leader and influencer in life. Amen. So that being said, my loves, I want to share with you today four practical steps that will help you be a good leader, that will help you be uh, a good influencer in your own life and in the life of those that are surrounding you. Amen. So step number one is decide to be a good leader you have to make that decision and remember that there are different kinds of leaders out there they are the good leaders and they're the bad leaders they're people that can influence people to make bad decisions so the first step is we need to decide that we're going to be a good leader amen not just for our own life but for once again those that surround us now a title will not make you a good leader your attitudes, your virtues, your examples is what is going to show what kind of a good leader you are. Amen. So once again, it's not a title. It's your attitudes, your virtues, and your examples that's going to show what kind of a leader you are. It is your decision that you want to be a good influencer in other people's life. It has to be your decision. When you decide to be a good leader in your own life and ask God for wisdom to make good decisions and follow up Jesus' footsteps, you will begin to experience what it's like to be the salt and the light of this world. So once you make that decision, once you say, I'm going to follow God, I'm going to follow Jesus' teachings, and then at that moment, you're positioning yourself to be a good leader and to experience what it is to influence in a positive way any circumstance and the world with being the salt and the light of this earth. Now, you, you will see how the Lord will increasingly put you in leadership positions and how other people will be influenced by your good content, conduct. So the more you follow God, the more you follow Jesus' steps, and his teachings, the more the Lord will position you uh, for people to see you and perceive you as a leader and to follow your guidance, to follow your steps. Amen. Now, Jesus teaches us how to be good leaders. And I want us to read John 13, and we're going to leave uh, read from 12 to 15. So John 13, from 12 to 15, it says, When he had finished watching their faith, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. And this is, they're talking about Jesus. And here is Jesus speaking. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord and right, rightly so. For that is what I am. Now that I, you Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should watch one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Amen. What a beautiful scripture and what a beautiful way for Jesus to remind us that if we want to be a leader, we need to serve other people. But most importantly, we need to lead by example. 
Jesus was teaching a lesson here to the disciples and he closes this this uh, verse by saying, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. If you want to be a good influencer in your home, if you want to be a good influencer in your community, at church, wherever you are, you need to lead by example. You need to show people that you are following Jesus' steps. Amen. And that will make you and position you to be a good leader. Now, Jesus was influencing and teaching the disciples by setting an example for them with his good deeds. Now, you decide to be a good leader with decisions as big or as small as you want. But something very small, guys, that I learned very early on my leadership uh, skills is as simple as you are writing early to an appointment. That shows the kind of, kind of person that you are. That shows the kind of leader that you are. So, and it's a decision that you make, right? Um, and a good leader directs and influences others by setting an example with your own habits, with your own actions, with your own words. Amen. Now, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, guys, to make you help you really reflect on how can we expect somebody to follow our lead if we're not even leading ourselves the right way. Amen. So how can you require someone to be early if you're always late? How can you require your children to be organized if you're always disorganized? How can you require your employees to manage their time wisely if you don't manage yours? Now decide today to be a good leader and influence others the same way Jesus did with us and is by leading by example. Amen. So that was a step number one. Now let's, re let's learn a step number two on how to be the good leader uh, that we can be. Is study la uh, daily. So step number two is study daily the manual of life. Which, has, which one is the, the manual of life? Is the Word of God. If you want to be a great leader and see lives transformed through your leadership, study God's Word every day. God's Word is the only one that is going to show you exactly how to live life in the right way. That's why it is the manual of life, right? It will teach you how to be a good leader in every single area of your life. Now, this is our manual for life, and it will teach, help, and advise you how to be in a star leader, like a, a, a wow leader, how to be the salt and the light of the world. Because precisely God teaches us, and that's where Jesus' teachings were for, to teach us how to walk in this life, how to please God, how to please ourselves, how to please others others how to love God how to love ourselves how to love others amen now never stop your education and personal and spiritual growth a good leader is always learning amen learn something new every day and share what you learn with others the more you read the word of God the more wisdom you will gain and the easier it will be for you to guide and teach other people. So the more you are lacking wisdom or knowledge in, in certain area of your life, the more you should be educating yourself in that area, whether it's in your personal life or your spiritual life. And to give you an example, if for example, you're struggling with organization and you don't know how to get organized, there are people out there that are leaders in that particular area. Why? Because they had to learn it, they had to transform their own life, and they have given good fruit and now they're organized people. And these are people that you can learn from. So that's why it is important that you guys uh, and all of us continue growing daily. Same thing, if there is a spiritual area that you want to grow, that you want to improve, you need to get closer to God in order for you to get better at it. And the more you're learning, the more beautiful thing in life is to share it with other people. And that position, positions you as a good leader. 
Now, if your life improves, improves the life of those people that are surrounding you are going to be influenced by your decisions as well, by your improvements as well. The manual of life, in other words, the word, the word of God contains the wisdom you need to equip yourself as a leader. So don't forget that, that if you're struggling with something, the answer is right there and it will help you be a better leader. Amen. Now, step number three, have a servant attitude. Have a servant attitude. To be a good leader, you must have a servant attitude. The best way to achieve this is by observing the needs of others and taking action. So, Watch your children, watch your husband, watch your co-workers, your friends, anybody who is near you and see by watching, by watching them, by watching them, you will be able to see their kind of needs they have and you will be able to position yourself to serve them. Now, a good leader is always aware of the needs of the people around her and is willing to serve. So we're always looking for that, looking for how can I serve? How can I be of a service to this person in this particular moment or what they're going through? So I'm going to give you some examples, guys, on how we can actually be aware of this kind of things and, and be able to help people when they need us. So help people grow constantly. If you see that they are having difficulty and you know how to help them, do it. So the example of the organization, if you see somebody is struggling to be organized, but you know how to be organized, you know how to um, give good fruit in that particular area, then help that person, help that person in that particular area. That positions you to be a good leader. That positions you to be able to share the good fruits that you have given. Amen. Now share everything you know with others and always have a heart willing to help. So the more you learn, I was telling you before, the more you learn, the more God gives you, amen, the more you want to have that desire of serve others and help others as well. Very early in my relationship with the Lord, guys, I learned a principle that it was very beautiful and is that when God blesses us, he doesn't just bless you. He's blessing and he wants to bless through you all those people around you with that blessing he has given you. So now every single time a blessing comes my way, I always ask the Lord, who is this blessing to afford as well, God? Because I know it's not just for me. And I look actively who I can bless, whether it's uh, he blessed me with time or with knowledge of something or with money, whatever it is, I always seek to bless others with that. And um, with that being said, guys, every single time, once again, God gives you something, we are to give back um, to other people from the goodness of what God has given us. Amen. Now, if you don't know the answer to something, do some research. If somebody's struggling with something and you're good at doing research or you're good at educating yourself, then educate yourself to help that person. Ask God for wisdom and help to guide people to grow and to be able to achieve everything he's calling them to do. So position yourself in a way that you can serve other people like Jesus did. Amen. Now you could identify where their needs are when you listen carefully and everything they're saying, everything they're speaking, a good leader knows how to listen and how, when to be quiet and when to listen, right? So it is important that we listen carefully to their needs and what they want or what they are um, waiting in life for, amen? And, and be able to help them, be there for them. Now, the final step, step number four, examine what your fruits are. It is important that we evaluate what kind of fruits we're giving in every single area of our life. And remember that at the beginning of the book, we study what those areas of our life are. And it's important that we evaluate them, what kind of fruits we're giving. Amen. Matthew 7, 17 to 20 speaks about that. Uh, Matthew 7, 7 uh, 17 
to 20 tells us. It says, likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. So what is God telling us here, guys? We will be able to know a person by the fruits. Amen? That's why I'm telling you it is so crucial that we examine and study what kind of fruits we're giving in our life and being able to make changes. That's why we're leaders, right, in our own life and say, okay, in my financial area or my spiritual area, whatever area, I'm not, e I'm not giving the fruits that I know I have the potential to give and then take action. Amen. When you bear good fruit, people will recognize you as a good leader. They will learn to respect you, to believe in you, to admire you, and to follow you thanks to the guidance you're getting from God. The more you spend time with God, the more you study His Word, the more you follow Jesus' steps, the more you will be able to give those good fruits and share those good fruits with other people. Amen? So share your good fruits with others. You are their guide to teach them how they can produce those same fruits as well. So you better than anybody else when you're giving a good fruit, you're the one who can tell the people what kind of seeds you were sowing in order to give that kind of fruit that you're bearing today. Amen? So that's why it's important that you share uh, those seeds and those fruits with other people and that's something that I absolutely love doing as well guys and and that's what I'm doing right now I everything that God has given me I'm giving it back to you guys every wisdom every knowledge every seed I'm putting it back out to you guys sharing it with you so you guys can plant those same seeds and be able to enjoy those beautiful fruits uh, that comes out of discipline and all the things that we have been learning through the virtuous woman book amen so that being said i want to close by reading um a, a paragraph that i wrote at the end of the, this chapter because i think it's important that we meditate on this and it says remember that you decide if you want to be a carrot an egg or the coffee your actions will determine what fruits are what fruits are and it all starts with the small decisions you make every day if you decide to be a good leader in your own life you will be a good leader and a positive influence on the life of the people around you mothers think about your children the more you guys grow in the word of god the more you guys will be able to guide your children in the right path amen and now i close by saying always remember that you are a leader wherever you go that you are representing jesus you are the model for your children your friends your colleagues and for everyone who recognizes you as a christian carry your title of a good leader high and change the color the taste and the smell of the water wherever you go. Choose to be coffee. Amen. So let's choose to be the salt and the light. Let's choose to influence the circumstances and not letting the circumstances influence it, influencing us. We got everything we need, guys. The Word of God, once again, the manual of life is right there to guide us, to show us. God is there to give us wisdom on everything we do. So let's take advantage of that. Amen. Now, if you are ready to activate this puzzle piece in your life, I want you guys to type in an amen or say amen if you guys cannot type in. I see you guys here connected. I'm so excited once again that you are learning this special peace that is so critical to be that virtuous woman and is to be a good leader of our own life and a good leader for other people's life. Amen. Now, I encourage you, my loves, to continue planting good seeds in your mind by listening to those podcasts that we have 
Monday through Friday for you. You can find them on YouTube. You can find them on the podcast as well. Remember that tomorrow we have the workshop with Angelica to activate those steps. So make sure you log in. And in our private group, my sister Jessica is bringing devotionals that are helping you Go deeper with the Lord. And if this happens every Saturday at 9.30 on our private group, Transform Your Life. So go and see us there. Also on Tuesday's meal, prays for your needs. So send your prayer requests. We will be happy to pray for you on Tuesdays. And that's all. That being L, guys, I'll be here next Wednesday at noon. So make sure you guys log in. The video is recorded and it's safe on YouTube. So you guys can go and watch all the videos there. And let's close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for this beautiful day you have given us. Thank you for the word you have shared with us today. We ask you, Father, to please help us be those good leaders, Lord, to always seek you, to always follow your steps, Father, so we can influence people, Father. Help us be the salt and the light of this world. Help us change the the circumstances, Father, instead of allowing in the circumstances to shape us, Father. Thank you, Lord, for this word you have given us today. And thank you for helping us become that virtuous woman that you have declared that we are, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Thank you for connecting. I see you guys here on YouTube and Facebook. Thank you so much, guys. Have a blessed day, and I'll see you next Wednesday. Bye, guys.